So this is a collaborative project with myself and Emily, Emily Maimura at the University of Illinois uh, Urbana-Champaign, but unfortunately she can't be here today. Um, okay. So curated collections. So the concept of collections as data has been around for quite a while now, but there's actually no standard way on how to you know, turn your collections into data. So that's something that we've been trying to do in the UK Web Archive. Uh, we have over 100 curated collections um, ranging in dates from 2005 up until uh, 2023. Uh, well, because um, we haven't been making too many collections recently uh, that are public. Uh, they fall into three uh, categories, so event-based, rapid response, or thematic. And these screenshots here are just a selection of some of those collections that are... Um, that we would like to turn into um, collections as data. So. Um, so we want to publish these in active uh, collections as um, in CSV, TSV, JSON format. Um, they will be published through our repository at the uh, British Library. And some of the possible fields include URLs, title descriptions, crawl frequency, and date created. So I think now we've got, we're getting very close to finishing the... Um, starting the project to publish these collections that we've figured out what um, metadata fields we're going to publish. And then, so data sheets for data sets, this was a framework de developed by Gebru et al. And uh, the reason why they developed it was because um, the importance of data for machine learning, there's currently no standardized process for documenting the machine learning data sets. They propose that every data set be accompanied with a data sheet that documents its motivation, composition, collection process, and recommended uses, and so on. So we were thinking that this would be a very good uh, framework then to apply to web archives, and would that then help to support research use of web archives? Because we've always seen that we make these collections available, but the research use isn't always um, being taken up. So we did some workshops just to kind of test this. And uh, we used the ATER data documentation template because there was only 31 questions with nine sections in this, whereas the original data sheets framework um, had over 50 questions. And that would have been too much to organize in a workshop, card sorting workshop. So we, um, with the, we had 33 participants in four workshops. And we had two pilots to kind of test um, how it was going to flow. Um, and we used the Moscow uh, project management technique to, um, to rank each of the questions um, in the groups about must have, should have, could have, and won't have. And so this is some of the initial results from June 20, last year. And um, so it's changed slightly now that we've rejigged uh, how we're um, scoring the questions. Um, but you can kind of see there wasn't really very much consensus on the questions, apart from one and maybe two and three, or 31, sorry. But there was a lot of um, uh, variety in what people were prioritizing. So we're going to publish our findings from these workshops and the, um, the framework of data sheets in the order of... Um, into four categories of like the must have, the should have, and um, could have and won't have, and um, and a lot of other supporting documents as well to go with it, especially as well as some sample data sets, the data sheet that accompanies that, and then a data dictionary, and um, and some tips of how we've uh, managed to um, uh, that came up when we were working on the project and how we're going to publish these data sets, and. Uh, so this is just um, an example of some of the um, documentation that we're going to have in this toolkit. So we have um, um, the recommended questions. So there's question three and question 12. We have uh, the description value, and then we have notes on it. So like, um, because sometimes the questions were, um, they caused a lot of discussion because it wasn't clear how you apply that to web archives. And um, so we give some guidance tips on maybe what it is that uh, would be more applicable to web archives. And you can access the toolkit in the BL repository. The link is now live, but the content won't be there till June. And uh, so keep an eye out on the UK Web Archive social media channels for, um, to see when the toolkit's going to be published. And uh, if you have any questions, just come find me. And that's it.